Okay, it's uh, 6 o'clock. I'd like to call a meeting of the Tech Board to order on May 21st, 2024. First thing, our EDC. Oh, hold on, report. I'm not bothering with that. Okay, uh, I guess I I should say my name. It would be easier, I think. Okay. <laughs> it's ta it's <laughs> it's Takis. It's Takis. T A T A S. It's Takis. Yeah, Takis Hinaris. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on EDC. Okay, we love to. So thanks, thanks for uh, having me today to talk about it. Um, so you can guess from, from my strange accent and my name, strange name also. I'm I'm from Greece. I'm Greek. Um, I did my graduate studies in Greece and I moved uh, to the United States in 1976. Um, so I come from a small town called Kiparisia from the southwestern part of Greece, southwestern part of Peloponnese. It's by the Ionian Sea. It has a very long history. I still have a house there. My wife and I are visiting often. I, I go more often than my wife, but we go probably three, three weeks, four weeks a year on different trips. So I, I made U.S. my home after my graduate studies, uh, which I came, as I said, in 1976. Um, now, living and working in New York, I always wanted my wife and I talking about moving to a small town. Uh, in 2000, we visited Woodstock to visit some friends. And uh, my wife and I, after a while, looked at each other. We say that's the one. So in 2005, we bought a house here. It was our second home. So we started first with uh, pretty much a weekends here and then became three days and then it became four days a week. And uh, about uh, six years ago, beginning of 2018, we moved here full time. So uh, I, we love everything about Woodstock, especially its people here. Uh, I saw the, the EDC opening and I decided to apply. Um, so I, 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 as a matter of fact, I follow a couple of the meetings. I saw the projects they're involved and I, I think I could help. That's why I applied. So just to give you a little bit of my background in business, I have been in business for more than 40 years now. Um, my early years, I co-founded a software company and, uh, and after that, uh, basically, I, was, uh, I had position, safety positions in a number of uh, companies. And all of my, uh, all my experience is around uh, deploying software treasury solutions to treasury systems on very large treasury departments and corporations and, and banks. For example, to give you some example of my clients, there will be Ford, there will be ExxonMobil, there will be Blackstone, there will be European Investment Bank, there will be Central Banks in Europe. Uh, all of these are my clients, and that's what I was doing for basically all these 40 years. I have run a global teams in, uh, of people in sales and marketing, professional services in the United States, Europe, and Asia at the same time. Uh, saying user in Asia, you, you, can, you can understand I have traveled extensively. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I think that the, the, all my travels and the different cultures I have gone through uh, have, have helped me a lot on my, on my background and my business. Um, hire hundreds of people. Uh, I, I can read situations. I can read people very quickly. Uh, most, a, a very large numbers of these people are executives today. So uh, basically, I know how to lead them and how to, to, to bring them up higher and higher in their businesses. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a problem solver. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a problem solver. I uh, have very analytical mind, but very practical. I'm a relationship builder. I, I love to sell. Just to give you an example, right? my wife and I, some of you may know that my wife and I, my wife especially has a company that sells uh, olive oil here in uh, Woodstock and in other states. Um, and sometimes I will go to the farmer's market to do an event to, to taste olive oil and to explain what olive oil is about, etc. And to be honest, I have the same satisfaction selling an olive oil of $25 with uh, selling multi-million dollar systems and solutions to big corporations and big banks. So I love to sell. Uh, so uh, I think I can help. Uh, if you think I can help, let me know. I would love to do it. And uh, any questions you may have, I'll be happy to answer. And you've said you've been to some EDC meetings? 
I, 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 yes, I attended a couple of the meetings and uh, I, I heard about the projects that are involved and I think it's pretty interesting and I think I could help, yes. Any other questions? No? Okay, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll let you know. Yeah, thanks so much, thanks so much. Okay, next up is Demetrius. Oh, yeah, sure, yes, why not? Thanks very much for making time to interview me. A um, little bit about me. Um, my wife and I have lived here since October. We've wanted to live here for a very long time. My wife um, actually used to come here as a child, and she's wanted to live here since she was a child, and she actually convinced me to, but didn't take a lot of convincing. So we're here full time, and one of the reasons I want to um, apply for this position is very simple, I want to give back. Um, I went to Cornell University, I have a, grad, a degree in natural resources, I went to the University of Michigan, and I have an MBA in general management, and I had a 20 plus year in corporate America. And I loved it until I didn't. And when I didn't, I realized I really didn't. And so I pivoted to a life of service. So right now I work for Save the Children, we're an international humanitarian organization. And I think it's important to note that I've been involved in every town I've lived in as an adult, as a volunteer, as a board member, as a trustee, et cetera, just because I think it's important for a community to be vibrant for regular citizens to step up and actually contribute. So it's a big part of my DNA, and that's um, important for you to know. So when I found out about this position, I had coffee with John just because I wanted to know what could I possibly be getting myself into if I were selected. And, and I learned a lot about not only what the commission does, but a little bit about him, a little bit about the rest of the committee members. And what struck me was that he pointed out um, the three overarching objectives, but five major initiatives. And we had a pretty robust conversation because of the five um, initiatives um, that he talked about, affordable housing, childcare, marketing, beautification, community events, I have direct experience in education in four out of the five of them. And so what I could bring to this commission is actually the ability to, to roll up my sleeves and get work done and contribute ideas from day one. A lot of people know Save the Children as an international humanitarian organization where we respond to disasters and relief. What they don't know is that actually what we do is we go into rural communities in the US and we try to focus on community development. And so one of the things I'm working on right now in my daily work is how to bring childcare and childcare support to rural America. It's a very big part of what we do. The other thing that I can say that I've done pretty, um, um, I, I've done quite a bit of is marketing. I had a 20 year career in marketing. Um, I've worked for organizations like Gatorade, Starbucks, um, Adidas Group, and most recently TJ Maxx, which leads me to another thing that we talked about a lot, which was how do you build a brand, but how do you market a town how do you actually drive visitation? And you know, when I worked at TJ Maxx, the whole name of the game was how do you get feet through the door? And so I have direct experience in that also, but importantly, it's about having the right kind of customer experience. And so because of my education and also my experience, I know how to do that. I know how to do that in a responsible way. Um, and the last thing I would say, downtown beautification. So I hide this on my resume because it's a, it's a point that, um, has been um, pretty contentious in my family, but I'm a two-time architectural school dropout. Mm -hmm. And so I say that to you, one, because I loved it, but I wasn't great at it at first. And I, I attribute that to being an 18-year-old who wanted to join a fraternity and drink a lot of beer. But then I went to graduate school. So in my undergraduate time, I studied architecture. As a graduate student, I studied landscape architecture for two years. And so I say that to you because even though I took a little bit of a detour and I joined corporate America as a marketer. I know a lot about what it takes to actually design and renovate and beautify for, for summers. I work for my uncle who is a contractor in California. And so I know the theory, but I also know how to get the work done. And so when I, you know, after the end of the coffee, um, John said, you should really apply to this. And so that's why I'm here to talk to you today. Uh, it's not just that I want to give back, it's not just that um, I want to do good, it's that I have the right kind of experience that I think John outlined that the Economic Development Commission is looking for. 
questions? No, yeah, so I haven't, and I wanted to talk about that. Um, I had coffee with John maybe, I don't know, four weeks ago, and he said, make sure you go to a meeting. The week of the meeting, my dad had emergency surgery, and I had to fly down to Florida. So I missed the meeting. He's fine, but he wasn't. And so um, with apologies, I wasn't able to um, attend the meeting. Well, they record them. Good news. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, there's an executive session scheduled for yeah. later. The board wants to discuss the appointment then. But again, yeah, there's one open. Yeah, one open. Did the trustees already interview these candidates? Yeah. Oh, okay. they don't? No. Okay. Power rest with you. Okay. So we're all set. Thank you. And Thank you for your time. Let you know. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Additions and deletions. So we're just going to add uh, one addition is another sewer connection permit. Our application, uh, Nikki sent it to you, I believe, last week. There's also hard copies on, on the table, so we can add that to C under sewer permits uh, five under S. So it's else? I don't have anything else. Business comments. Uh, please. Hi, everybody. Just state your name. Michael Stoner, S T O N E R, Capsville. Um, in November of 2021, several hundred Woodstock voters petitioned the select board to adopt a number of changes in town zoning regulations that would permit farms located in R5 zones to operate restaurants if they met a slew of fairly stringent requirements. Susan Yu, Ray, and Carrie remember these deliberations, probably not with a lot of fondness, but I appreciated your engagement then. Um, the on-farm restaurant amendment was finally passed and went into effect in uh, November, November 17th of 2022. While this measure was not about Peacefield Farm per se, as Joe, who was the chair of the select board, reminded us repeatedly during those deliberations, many of the voters who supported these changes did so because they also supported Peacefield Farm. Now, a clause in those regulations which limits an on-farm restaurant to a 2,800 square foot footprint is the basis upon which Peacefield's restaurant was denied permission to open. I respectfully request the select board take action starting next month to address this issue and strike the 2,800 square foot footprint language from Woodstock zoning regulations. The voters never asked for a square footage limit and instead used occupancy to control concerns about traffic and scale. And it's fair to say that supporters of the on-farm restaurant amendment believe that the current language refers to the space in a restaurant open to the public and not the total square footage of the structure in which the restaurant is located. Um, I'll note in closing that this ruling by the Vermont Environmental Court in response to the lawsuit filed by Peacefield opponents overrides both the TDRB's approval of the restaurant and the will of a large number of Woodstock voters. And just for your reference, um, 242 uh, Woodstock voters supported the on-farm restaurant amendment in 2000 in 2021. And uh, in, 20, in 2022, the following year in the select board election, 837 people voted. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Any other citizen comments? Uh, good evening. I'm Sarah Harrison West, and I live at 29 Slayton Terrace. This was my brother's home for 15 years, and it's now uh, my property and catching up on some long overdue maintenance. But I've also been um, actively uh, monitoring the development in my neighborhood. Um, uh, we have flanking me on the east side, Watkins Way. You all are familiar with that project? 
And then on the west side of me is 27 Slate Terrace. And with the new rules in place from October, not telling you anything y'all don't know. Um, as an abutting property owner, I was surprised that we no longer receive a notice in writing of a new project. And so I did see the notice uh, thumbtacked on a building on the project site, and that was posted for 15 days. And I did see the notice in the paper. Paper comes once a week, and I do receive it, and I do read it. Um, I'm concerned that the scale of this particular property, this project, and I'm, I'm not trying to stop this particular property project. I'm concerned that with the new rules for, in, you know, facilitating construction and bringing in new um, homes for folks. I realize we all need new homes, but this is not workforce housing. We all know that. This, this particular pro project, and you all know there are several others um, underway, $6 million, 9,000 square feet is, in my opinion, is too large a project to get an actual administrative approval. Off you go. Um, you know, we're all in a, at such a, I'm not saying anything y'all don't already know, but we're at such a, a crossroads here for growing the town, accommodating new uh, residents and accommodating the folks that have held the fort down for so long and paid their taxes and participated as excellent stakeholders. Um, and, but we have a town infrastructure issue, preaching to the choir, <laughs> and I'm concerned about the density that is uh, being allowed, particularly in our neighborhood on, on Slayton Terrace, where Slayton's built homes, it was a farm, we're already tight in there, and uh, we're zoned residential high density. If, if it was possible, I would ask you all to, re to rezone or reclassify this neighborhood to R5 single family and give folks that want to exercise ADUs on their property an opportunity to request a variance for multifamily versus an automatic signature. Um, right now, I'm concerned about stormwater runoff. My ditch along Lincoln, I'm on the corner in case y'all at Slayton and Lincoln up on the hill, pink house. Uh, my ditch is always wet, standing water. And I realize it's a function of uh, vegetation and that sort of thing, but it's also, we've never had this stormwater issue and standing water before new construction. And we'll work with the town to clean the vegetation up on my property so we can determine the source of where this water is coming from because we never had standing water before. Um, and it's at my property line, uh, uh, the Watkins Way project and uh, my home. Uh, I'm I'm, I apologize for missing the opportunity to um, have to, to stand and 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 ask that the project not happen in time, in a timely fashion. I didn't realize there was a 30 day window when the t project came along, but I'm excited to know still in understanding the process and the permitting that particularly 27 Slayton Terrace comes before you all eventually when the, when the sewer permit comes along. It's a large demand on our little bitty uh, hose up at the top of the hill. Um, and I hope you all will consider uh, the situation and consider the capacity for that little situation and do what you can to slow the process so we make sure that we're making careful decisions. You know, this neighborhood is not part of the HPC, but it is on the National Register. We are a contributor. Our whole neighborhood is a bunch of contributing properties. They're important. It's an important neighborhood. Um, and we just want to keep the scale and the homeliness of the neighborhood, not keep it as it's always been, certainly, but keep it family friendly. We just don't know where, I mean, for when Watkins Way was constructed, 
there was a lot. They they used my property as their staging. I don't know why, because Watkins Way is a really big piece of property, but there's still materials on my property. And I have am having open conversations with the property owner, of course. But um, good grief, with 27 Slayton Terrace, there is no place to stage. There's hardly a shoulder. Uh, when we were, when Zero Slayton started off, you all know, you're familiar with that. There's no place for those jump trucks to go but down Slayton Terrace, skinny little road that used to be a path, and now it's got black top, and now it's a town road. But it's a skinny little road, and it has no shoulders. And here come the big old dump trucks hauling the dirt. And I mean, last year, I had no shoulders. And the shoulders were just eroding because of this heavy equipment. And I, these are sweet little Woodstock roads. It's not like the state's going to come and fix them. I realize that. So please be careful, be thoughtful. And I'm so looking forward to being a part of your uh, town. Thank you so much. Again, my name's Sarah West. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm gonna be, you know, just help yourself. Uh, <laughs> um, you didn't see me, so I figured. Roger Logan, Woodstock Village. Um, first of all, I want to thank the town for repainting the crosswalks. I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, I would like ultimately to see signs at the crosswalks, especially because they are going to be scraped off by the plows again. Um, and more importantly, I want to echo what Michael said. Um, I, I think within within the parameters that that you're comfortable in terms of taking risk, we really need to move forward with allowing this restaurant to open. It's a, it's a tragedy that that this is not being allowed to happen in the face of, of so much support. And on a bigger issue, which I've said to you all before, we're in danger of, of things being decided by the legal system or people essentially misusing regulations in the legal system to stop things that they don't like for whatever reason. And this is clearly not the only instance of that happening. So I understand we need to be risk averse, but I think we also need to be brave at some point and say, so I think we should amend this this on farm this on farm regulation as expeditiously as possible. Um, and again, being as risk averse as you need to be, but thanks. Thank you. Roger, do you have a comment on the budget you want to make or? Um, I mean, you, well, I'm sure I can. I, think, um, I had a, several questions about the budget because I assume we're kind of reaching the end of the fiscal year. So we're pretty close to, to um, what, wh where we're going to end up. Um, and Eric actually answered all of my detailed questions. But in looking at the fire department, uh, the ambulance um, budget specifically, I think now might be a good time to step back a little bit and look at how we're running this business and seeing if there's ways we can run it a little. Either I don't, I don't say it's not being well run, but just let's look and and now decide because it's a huge chunk of money, um, and I don't know if there's other revenue opportunities that we're not tapping. I'm concerned about the amount of money that we're writing down every year, which went over budget this year, but why are we writing down so much? And I understand that there are people who simply cannot pay, and I don't think it's a good look for Woodstock to go and and start pounding on their door and repossessing their house, but, but maybe we really do need to examine the way we're running this business and whether or not some parts of the business may not be a part of the business we should be in. So... Mm -hmm. That's um that's my big over the overarching budget thing with this. But in general, again, I think it's it's um it's admirable that we have kept so close to the budget. Um and I know that takes a lot of discipline and especially with so much happening with the, the flooding and everything else. Um we're all that you and, and the town staff are to be congratulated on that. Thanks.
Um, just a few things. Uh, one, um, Nikki should have sent out a doodle poll um, to see when we have a joint meeting to talk about the audit findings for both the village and the town. So before, if we can do it at the same time, we save money to have him have come back twice. Um, so have a chance, fill that out, um, and then the public have a chance to kind of listen to how the financials were for the last fiscal year. Um, kind of on that, uh, we've talked tentatively of June 4th at 5.30 to reschedule um, kind of the personnel policy um, and then uh, extra meetings with committees and goals for the next fiscal year. Um, all those original meetings got kind of swallowed up by the short-term rental conversation in April. Uh, so trying to restart them. Um, the hope is to have the updated personnel policy in effect for July 1. Uh, of the new fiscal year. So that'll be the priority in those meetings is presenting the personnel policy and then kind of having conversations about it leading up to July 1 uh, to make sure that we have something new in place for the new fiscal year. Um, so if there's no issue with that, we can talk about scheduling later, but hopefully we can get that going. Uh, next, uh, this is the first week of summer hours for town hall staff. Uh, so on Fridays, town hall will be closed at noon. Um, I will still be in town hall and available if needed, um, along with emergency services uh, as well. So it shouldn't be any hold up on that end. And we'll post that and have that everywhere so people are aware of that. Um, last thing, uh, since the last time we've met, uh, Mark Hunter, our public works director, gave his notice. Uh, Friday was his last day. Uh, we, so first, I want to thank Mark for all his hard work over about the 18 months he was here. Um, especially with the, the flood uh, last July, um, him and his crew were out there nonstop, making sure roads were possible, making sure people could get where they needed to go. Uh, then he's been very helpful with the FEMA reimbursement and documenting everything they did, because uh, FEMA wants every single detail filled out. So Mark's been very helpful with that. Uh, by wishing the best of luck um, on his new journey, uh, I think a lot of it was um, family related, um, but also. Um, I think there is a level of burnout that happens too, especially here in Woodstock. Um, a lot of asked, a lot, of, a lot is asked of employees, especially in positions like public works. Um, and I think it is very difficult for some people to um, unwind when they're being constantly contacted um, for a certain help around the around the town. Um, so we're trying to put things in place to kind of alleviate some of that. Some of that is new personnel policy. Uh, some are new, some new strategies internally, um, but I'd be lying if I said there was some burnout, you know, with that as well. Um, especially for a director who does not get overtime, who's working on weekends, working overnight shifts, um, sometimes 14, 15 days in a row with the crew. Um, it's not an ideal situation to have a, a nice work-life balance. Um, with that said, uh, we posted the job about a week and a half ago, um, and we'll have it posted for another week or so. No side interviewing uh, and kind of going from there. Can I ask a few questions? Yep. Um, are we still short staffed on DPW or are we fully staffed uh, outside of Mark's? Outside staff? of Mark's, we're fully staffed besides that position. Okay. And are we doing an exit interview with Mark? Yes, we are. Okay. Okay. Financial report. Financial report. Uh, the board has a financial report in front of them. Um, Susan has some questions. I believe I've answered some of them. Uh, we made some changes uh, today to fix some of the mistakes we found. Um, but overall, revenue is above budget. Uh, expenses are a little bit higher. But that's because we're using transfers out. So we'll transfer out um, the EEI costs uh, once we get that reimbursement coming in. Uh, then all the capital spending will be transferred out as well. So the expenses will look even better you know, by the end of the fiscal year. Thank you. Next up is the Woodstock project. Both the same with Woodstock here, and I believe someone else from the state, Catherine King, as well. Um, but just to give some background, um, in August 3rd, 2021, um, the select board voted um, uh, to apply for the Whistler project in the amount of $280,000. Um, originally, some of those funds were gonna go towards the purchase of land at East End Park. That has kind of stalled currently with what we found out about what could or could not happen there. 
Uh, so Samuel Woodsox here with another request, and I'll turn it over. Yeah, thank you. I'm Ginevra with Sustainable Woodstock, and we've got uh, Catherine King. There she's coming. Um, joining us via Zoom, Catherine is the Nonpoint Source Project Developer with the Agency of Natural Resources for Vermont. She is the one who's the main contact for the WHISPER program, which stands for Water Infrastructure Sponsorship Program, in case you're curious about the kind of strange acronym. And she's going to give a brief overview of that program and then the specifics of what we're asking for today. But I just want to clarify, um, since I don't believe any of you were around in 2021, uh, at that time, the board uh, authorized Sustainable Woodstock to receive WHISPER funding on behalf of the town and village of Woodstock, and that's to implement natural resources projects. So bank restorations, dam removals, things like that, connected to the uh, wastewater treatment plant upgrades. Um, not the coming ones, the older ones. Um, so yeah, I will, I'll stay here and I'll let Catherine just give an overview of the program and kind of the, the ask for today. Sure, thanks, Ginevra. Um, hi, everyone. So I'll be talking about the Water Infrastructure Sponsorship Program. As Ginevra mentioned, we call that WHISPER. Um, and this is a funding program that allows for the implementation of natural resource projects um, through municipal sponsorship by a Clean Water State Revolving Fund loan. Um, and so we have been working on a project with Woodstock, in Woodstock, um, which is the Community Garden Bank Stabilization Project with Sustainable Woodstock. Um, to be sponsored by the CWSRF loan associated with the construction of the South Woodstock Wastewater Treatment Facility upgrade, which um, is just wrapping up. Um, and so the way that the program works is that the CWSRF loan principal is increased by up to 10% of the original loan. And the state then de decreases the interest so that the overall indebtedness of Woodstock remains the same over the life of the loan, um, as if we had not added on to that principle based on the cost of the Whisper Natural Resource Project. Um, and so after making this adjustment to the, um, the interest rate, we will then decrease it by an additional 0.1%. So this acts as an, an incentive for the town of Woodstock and um, gives a discount over the life of the loan. So I do have a graph. I don't know what your visuals are looking like here, but I have a graph that I could share that could help illustrate this. Um, yep, give me one second. I'm just trying to get you to be able to share your screen. Okay. Um, can you start with that and I'll try to get you the ability to share. Oh, um, no, I, I did. I became the co-host. I should. I should be able to. It's just not until we can figure out. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay. So I hope you guys can see this here, um, just on this word document. But this sort of illustrates how that works in us increasing the principal by the cost of the Whisper project, but then. That reduction in the interest rate ends up in um, a discount over the life of the loan for the overall indebtedness of the town. Um, and you can see that difference illustrated between the red and green lines here. It's small on this, but um, obviously we're dealing with big numbers here. So overall, that could lead to a discount of up to around $65,000 for the town. Um, and that's all I have for my spiel. Happy to take any questions or if you wanted to talk more, um, Ginevra, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Catherine. So I think that's a great illustration of what an incredible opportunity Whisper is for the town in terms of being able to implement these projects without actually spending our money. Um, the purpose of today's vote is that in order to go forward with the project right now that we're working on, 
we need the select board to approve the resolution that's in your package, we're asking you to, um, that increases the loan principal um, up to 10% of that original bond amount, um, which is what Catherine just illustrated. So that just enables the actual loan principal to increase. But then as you saw, in the end, the town will save money despite the principal of the loan increasing. And this is something that we didn't, to be honest, I didn't realize we needed to do this vote because um, the select board had already approved Whisper basically, or kind of given their go ahead. But it turns out that just regulatory wise for the state, for the bond council, they would like us to get your okay on in increasing that principal. Did I explain that to your to your liking, Catherine? Yeah, I think it's just an additional um, authorization that's required by the Vermont Bond Bank um, that specifying the exact amount that can be increased. Can you just explain a little bit more where the funds, what will, the funds will do? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the funds, so it's going to be, so the original bond was for $280,000, but in the end, that's not. Um, or sorry, the original bond was for, um, that, that's the original amount we were going to get for Whisper. Um, now it's going to be $227,000 and roughly that we're going to have for Whisper money. Right now, the first project we've been working on for a while is bank stabilization on Barnard Brook, which is across the road from Billings Farm, down the hill, past the overflow parking lot. We already got a grant to do an initial evaluation of it. And then after the July storm, things got pretty rough down there, if you've gone down and seen. Uh, the engineers estimate that if we let it keep eroding, not only will it take out our garden, but also it'll keep going to the road right before that bridge there. Um, so this and it, it this started way back in Irene. Uh, I've been told I actually didn't go down there around that time, but um, the erosion is pretty constant. So the first project is to uh, decrease the slope to make it more flat and then do natural buffer plantings, vegetation um, down there. And then from there, um, we have a couple in the works. They're all prioritized by the Agency of Natural Resources. Okay. So our contact there has like priority projects for the town of Woodstock. Um, a number of those are some smaller dam removals on Kedron Brook. That's another possibility. So we're kind of focusing on this one first. And then I'll talk to the state and see where we should go next. Is that the golf course? Sam? Yeah. That's the Connecticut River Council's been working yeah. on. Oh. Yeah, and they're, they're aware of this money and we've talked to them. So that is potentially a really good next project. Great. Any other questions? Um, and I will entertain a motion to approve this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well set. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neville. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, a. Uh, the same as the sign is right. Yeah, we have. Uh, uh, next stage. I don't know if anyone's here to speak to that. Um, but in your packet, you have a letter, um, page 31. Uh, it's the same one they've done in the past. Uh, they have not done the last few years due to COVID and other issues. Um, Chief Swanson's aware of it. The uh, Windsor Sheriff's also aware of it. And so is David Green. Um, and we don't need additional insurance. But they don't need additional insurance. Um, so yes. we're going to be named on the United States Cycling Federation. Is that? So in the, the yeah. insurer with the U.S. Cycling Services Regulation. Yeah, and on page 34. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that now. It says that on. Yeah, down bottom certificate holder you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. But the insurance is under the US cycling. Is there a motion to approve the current stage, please? 
I'll make a motion to approve the Killington State Race application. Second. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Billy Lyon. Page 38, 39. So they're just using the letter, they're just um, replacing utility line within uh, right of way uh, from Skyland Land to Durham Hill Road. And so they need approval on the permits. Too late. They let the residents know that's happening when they do that? Uh, we will, yes. Okay. The motion to approve utility line rebuild by Green Mountain. I'll make a motion to approve that utility line rebuild. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up is Green Mountain. Park Association. <clears throat> I think in the past they just let us know uh, when they're going to use the roads. Uh, the board then approves it, and that's kind of the end of. The but do we require any insurance proof of insurance from them as well? Uh, not that I'm aware of. No. Just curious why we wouldn't. So you're talking about if they hurt themselves while they're on a trail? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or town road, town road. We can we can request it. I actually had a situation years ago with that. Nothing ever developed, but the horse kicked my trailer. Um. So we can. So do you, do you have something scheduled on May twenty fifth? That one coming up. Yeah, this weekend. Yeah. Um. So if the board wants them to have insurance, we can reach out to them. And so you can approve it pending insurance. I think it's. A, I mean, I think we should be consistent. We're yeah. asking everybody else for the insurance. Why would we? Rogers, Do we have asked for insurance before from them. Not that I'm aware of, but this is only the second year going through it. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Um, can I just ask a general question about road closures and races and things like that? Um. Are we comfortable or confident that whatever we're charging organizations is paying for the amount of town police effort that goes into it? Um, and if not, can we look into altering that in some ways? Yes, I think it's one of the Joe Swan Joe Swanson's things he brought up uh, when he became chief was to start charging for uses of the police force for these things. Um, I believe this year we're kind of letting people know that's the case and sorry, next year we're going to start charging them uh, because there are a lot of events that use our services without any payment. Um, so once I try and do that. Like they always did. No, mm -hmm. mm -mm. For sure not. Okay, so motion to approve Green Mountain Bus Association and the... I'll move that. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Our favorite subject. Do what? This is comments and not a big Yeah. Thing. First one is. No, a short. No. Is anyone here from that? Yeah, I think Andrew Winter from Two Pines is on. Kevin Geiger, I'm not sure if they're there. For I saw Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. Karen, Andrew, are you here for your sewer permits for Mellishwood? Andrew's here. I'm here for, yes, I am here for the sewer permit for Mellishwood. Okay. Would you like me to give an overview of the project? Yeah, or? yeah that'd be great. Quick one, please. Okay. 
Um, so you have in your packet uh, a request for a sewer uh, permit uh, connection permit for Mellish Woods. Um, this is a 29 unit uh, or 26 unit ex existing senior housing project that we are in the process of uh, getting the funding together for a uh, comprehensive redevelopment. The redevelopment will include um, the demolition of one of the 1970s era buildings at the project and the addition of a new building, which will actually be 28 units. Um, so the net is to actually increase the overall number of units at the property from 26 to 39, with the addition of a three-story building. We already have site plan approval. Um, we have uh, obtained necessary financing from um, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, as well as the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. So this project is moving along um, relatively quickly and, and frankly, um, it's much needed. Um, these are properties that have not had a significant uh, in capital investment since the 1970s when they were originally developed as senior affordable housing. Um, so that is, uh, that's what we're up to. Um, and obviously, um, would very much appreciate a positive vote this evening um, for the sewer connection permit. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Not necessarily to do with the permit, but what happens to the people in those units yeah so because we're using federal um financing for this project um we have to comply with something called the uniform relocation act and pursuant to the uniform relocation act all of the folks who will be displaced um temporarily and we're hoping that it will be less than seven households that will be moved off-site um when we take down the first building and put the new building there those seven will be um provided with um assistance in finding new housing, um, which may be elsewhere in the project. It may be elsewhere at other properties that we have. Um, and so we'll pay for the moving costs. Um, we'll pay to hook up utilities. Um, we'll pay for moving costs to return folks back to the site. Um, so it ends up being uh, hopefully um, as minimally uh, disruptive to the people who live there as possible. Part of the reason we're building a new building on site is that way um, it is going to be hard to relocate uh, folks. It's a very tight rental market. And so um, by doing this, by building a new building, we're actually able to keep most of the folks living on site while the new building is going up um, and then relocate them uh, from their existing apartments uh, to the new building, take down the other 1970s era building. That's where parking will go and then um, rehab the two historic structures. We're actually looking at historic tax credits um, and going through a, a historic review with a state division for historic preservation. Um, but hopefully I've answered your questions around relocation. Um, we pay for all the moving, we pay for utility hookups, we pay for all of those um, costs. Um, if there's any difference between what people are paying now and what um, the temporary housing uh, that the seven households may be going to, that's covered as well. So it's a pretty comprehensive package uh, for each individual. I guess the only question I have is our sewer can handle another 13 units. Yeah. Okay. Where you are now, right? Yeah. I'm just really excited about this project. So thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're very excited about it and appreciate the support that we've gotten throughout the, the planning uh, process around this project. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the Militiawood housing? Upgrade. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Next one is. Yeah. Um, Okay. Anyone here from Lombard Holland? I don't see anyone. And they paid the fee? Yes. Is there a motion to approve that permit? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
then the new one is Steve Phillips. Three nineteen South Street. Looks like he's okay. Is there anyone there? Looks anyone here from me? I don't see anyone. All right. The page. So, is there a motion to approve that sewer connection on 39 South Street? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So the next one actually is the Hoyle Tanner agreement. Um, oh, sorry, I missed out. So I have some of Hoyle Tanner coming on around seven o'clock. They had a prior commitment because I couldn't reach out to them, reach out to them until yesterday. Um, so if there's questions on the agreement and the board wants to wait, we can wait. If there are no questions, we can go forward. Uh, but just for reference, this is what they presented to the board about two months ago. Uh, based on the request of the board, uh, the town attorney worked with them and the state to kind of make some changes. Uh, this is what the, they agreed to. Um, so it's been vetted by an attorney uh, and by the state and by Hull Tanner, and uh, they're all happy with the current contract as presented. Are you happy? I am. Well, I'm at it. Are you <laughs> Um, if, the, if, if there are questions for for Hill Tanner, we can wait till after seven, or the board can move forward now. Any questions, Gary? Anybody? Looks like lots of edits. Yeah. One or two. Okay. Um, oh yeah, um, it was all approved. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, if there are no questions, then we want to excuse me, move forward. Um, make the motion for the PV agreement. I'll make the motion. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so the yep, so this has to be done. Um, the um, Two Rivers requires that both the town and village approve this. So I have the language. Um, and just uh, the town of Woodstock Select Board authorizes the risk manager and the Department of Plan Zoning to apply to renew Woodstock's village center designation. That's the language. Um, uh, so just we don't. But <laughs> you can call them and let them know. I'll go back on vacation. Mm. So this is what we're just renewing. This is yeah. And the trustees uh, voted in favor of it uh, two weeks ago. Okay. They waited till 10 o'clock. <laughs> okay, Drew. Uh, motion to approve the village Senate designation. So moved. There's a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so I just put this on there. Um, the last time the board met was a public forum uh, to discuss the Woodstock Aqueduct Company and the progress the town has made towards uh, investigating a potential acquisition of the aqueduct. Um, so I wanted to give the board members some time to discuss it publicly or ask more questions or uh, give me more direction, but just, you know, a chance to kind of have a conversation publicly about if if you guys wanted to. I think I I was very happy with the turnout and the questions. Uh, my only outstanding issue is is following up with the agency of natural resources about the um, hookups for the water and whether or not more can be um, added and and how long that would take for for new ones to be added and where that originated. I think that was. Willie they Nickerson. were going to get back to us. They I were going to get back yeah. to us, yeah. Willie Nickerson. So I'm happy to stay on top of it. Or, um, But I don't know if Andrew's still on. I know that obviously that project will, it, 
that twin times. somebody in the oh, audience. Hi. Uh, do you mind coming to that? Yeah. Um, Ann Hill from Twin Pines Housing Trust. And we, um, Andrew sent a letter to Brian Redman uh, um, at the state and asked for clarification after that meeting because it, it sounded like there was a moratorium on adding new mm -hmm. connections. And um, I actually, I think I forwarded to you um, the letter that we got back as, as a um, clarification saying that um, it's actually up to the Woodstock Aqueduct to, to, um, Determine. to determine what okay. new connections can be, but in terms of um, capacity, there's not a concern, but there are some deficiencies in the system that, that they're concerned about, but um, but it's up to Woodstock Aqueduct. Um, and we, in the clarification that we, um, that Andrew submitted, he did um, say that we actually have a lot of funding that's at, at risk if we don't get a will mm -hmm. serve letter. Yeah. Um, and there's quite a bit of time for these, actually, these, especially the first four where we're going to, at Safford Commons, where we're going to lose funding. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of time before those are actually online. It's going to okay. be still get a year and a half. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm still on, the, on Zoom still. Yeah, I, do you I, have anything to add, Andrew? No, no, Ann, Ann, uh, Ann was on point, so I don't have anything to add. Thank you, Ann. Perfect. Um, and do we know from the Public Utility Commission if the rates uh, case has been approved or denied? Uh, so they're doing an investigation on it. Uh, they're going to hold a public meeting uh, probably June 5th or 6th at 5.30. Uh, right now, it looks like it's going to be all remote. Okay. Um, but I'm waiting for um, an exact confirmation on that. Great. Thank you. But with the, the fact that they said decided to go into a um, investigation, um, they have seven months to make up to make the decision. So it could be a long period before any we see any sewer increase. Okay. It could be or will be if they are going to. It do could it. be. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if any of the board member has any feedback from the public forum. And we we still negotiate, correct? Yes. That's all I have. <laughs> I mean, there was a main break on Elm Street last week that affected quite a few people in the village. And you know, the aqueduct did not notify people. The only reason I knew was because Mark was in my driveway for another reason. So yeah. I didn't know about it. No. Nope. No. It's all right. I did because my water was brown. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what was life? Okay. We'll also with that. Um, river project. I don't know if I'm going to talk about the river project or online. Kevin, are you? I am. Okay, there we go. Great. Um, so th this isn't much time, uh, at least for today, but I want to let you know that we are underway doing this project called River. And in this area, that's going to be Plymouth, uh, Bridgewater, and Woodstock. And the idea there is to really to think up projects and get them ready for application to go get FEMA funds later to not repeat um, damage from flooding. So whether that's uh, you know, damage to a town road or to a private building. I know we have some bank failures going on uh, around the place, but it's all sorts of things like that. It might involve uh, Riverside Park, or it might even involve, you know, uh, doing a floodplain modification somewhere upstream that would save some flooding downstream. So we're in the initial stages of that. Uh, we have engineering firepower on board as well. So it's not just us thinking about it it's actually doing the preliminary engineering. So we're ready to, to have good numbers for an application uh, a year out from now or so. Um, but I want to let you know about that. Um, I'm meeting with the village as well. And then we will have some public meetings. Um, but if you think of projects where you go, oh, that house or that thing needs to go higher, or that culvert of ours is, you know, needs work, uh, start thinking about those things. 
and, and then we will uh, be working with you over the next several months to come up with those projects. That's so I'm great, ha Kevin. happy to answer any questions. Um, how are you guys determining which projects to do? What's the prioritization? Do you guys determine that or do we determine that? Uh, no, uh, the town's really in the driver's seat for that. Okay. Uh, we have, with some caveats in there, um, we're going to have the engineers kind of take a, a blank slate look at things and see what they come up with as far as where they go, where's the biggest bang for the buck. Um, for us, there are certain things like river dredging, which some folks think is a good idea, which is not a good idea. Um, if that was a pro uh, the answer, we'd be like, no, that's that's not, not really going to happen. Uh, giant new dams might be a solution, but again, probably not going to happen. Um, so there, there are some things that we would be like, yeah. There are also other things that are good projects, but that would, would not meet FEMA's benefit cost uh, test in the end. And that doesn't mean, um, that means we can't be pursuing them hard under this project, but it doesn't mean we can't keep them and go, well, maybe that is a better project for USDA or Army Corps or, or somebody else who has a different funding program um, out there. Awesome. I mean, I think we could all probably think of a handful of, At least. of things, including the giant giant banks on the Ottawa that have failed and uh, Riverside Park and the wall by the Little Theater and- Yeah, um, same place though. Yeah. <laughs> Basically anywhere that's a river corridor. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, you know, it could be in the Kedron. Uh, it could be up Gulf Stream up that way. There might even be, I don't know uh, whether or not, I, I do see the bulldozers pushing the dirt around in the well field, um, but I don't know if there's if, if there's a project that needs to happen over there where um, both by Stimmets. Yep. That's, you know, that's what I was just saying. Stimmets yeah. seems to continually have a problem. But yeah, but you would be thinking of that. We'd basically um, be having some public meetings around that to come up with stuff and, uh, and then winnowing it down to things that are feasible and technically real, and that type okay. of stuff going forward that, that have, you know, solid community support. Great. Um, I think Wendy has a question. Wendy. Wendy. Thank, you. Thank you, Eric. Um, my question is for um, Mr. Geiger. Uh, be, has the Mountain View uh, School District, Supervisory Union School District, been in, uh, in touch with you as a, it's separate from the town in that it's a seven town school district, but being that the high school and middle school sit right on the river and a propose, proposal is looking at a building in the floodplain. Um, I just wanted to know if they're on your radar as a as a group that you would consult or ask for input or, you know, communicate with. Uh, yeah, they are on the radar. There is no, um, there's not a lot of physical damage to a building there. But if there's a project there where we might go, oh, for example, I know they've talked about channel modifications there if they do kind of a, a cut and fill um, in the proposed new building to 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 lower some of the floodplain because they're going to raise some more other parts of the floodplain. Um, something so like that. Yeah. I just wanted to connect it, see if the dots were getting connected on those yes. in, yeah. in in any in, in any communication. Yes, um, um, we've not me... formally connected with them, but we 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 have them on our screen. Okay, great. Because I, to me, that's a, a concern, two, two front concern. One is whether the roads give out to the school and whether another flood would impact the school. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I even it kind of falls into its own category that it's a supervisory union district, but. It, it doesn't matter about the only thing that's not going to be on our plate is if it was state infrastructure. Got it. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and so you'll be hearing more from us. Right. You know where you know where to find me. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Good night. Other business.
So one BSA 3138. Move we move into executive session under one BSA 313. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we have decided on a candidate for the EGP position, which is Daniel Pierce. For a motion, move that. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of minutes. Any questions on a minute? I just need to recuse from April 16th and 17th. Go to April. 16th and 17th. Motion approved in the minutes for April 16th and 17th. So moved. A second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes of April 24th. So moved. So a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. So moved. For a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.